Your purpose comes from your pain. You don't have to go sit on a mountaintop for 20 years to meditate on what your purpose is. Your purpose is to help people who currently are who you used to be. So whatever you came through, you struggled, you suffered to get here. Not physical pain like you broke your arm or something, like emotional pain. When did you feel just worthless as a human being? Go back to that moment and understand that there are millions of people right now who currently are 19 year old Evan facing the same problems and you represent hope to them. Like you made it out, you forged your own path and then just recognizing that there are millions of 19 year olds around the world that you could help and will love to help. And so we are we are hardwired to serve. Serving hits the same part of your brain as having food and having sex. It's literally hardwired into you as a human. But who do you serve? Not not everybody's equal. You could, you could hold the door for somebody, but it's not the same as helping somebody who currently is who you used to be. And again, that will never get old. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because I need them, because I want to wake up every single day and get pushed by somebody who's doing a lot more than me. And in watching their videos, it inspires me to be bolder, to have more courage and to go chase down the life of my dreams. And I hope it does the same for you. So today, let's learn from me and my team's take on my top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two is lean into discomfort. I do the interview and I was so nervous going into it that I, I'm wearing these, you know, a, a thick kind of hoodie mm -hmm. that I was sweating all through like the Tony interview. We're like, oh my God, more in the lead up. But after I'm so hot, like oh, I can't breathe. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. we did it, but I'm, I'm sweating buckets. And so I take off my shirt to mm -hmm. cool off, but I have five minutes until my next show with somebody else where yeah. I'm being interviewed. And so I get on and I forget to put my hoodie back on. So I'm in my undershirt and this is what I want to train you and other people. The immediate voice in my head is, oh, I need to, oh my God, look at myself. Like we went, we started recording, my camera comes on like, oh my God, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't realize. But then right away, it's like, no, I'm going to do this. As opposed to the guy would have been fine to say, hey, oh my God, I'm sorry. Can I just put my hoodie on? I'm sure he's going to say yes. Right. But yeah. I want to lean into that discomfort. And so I did the whole interview in my undershirt just because. Nice. You know? Mm -hmm. Just because. Now this guy, I mean, hopefully this guy gets a unique interview that's different um, than everybody else. Uh, and so that, that, like, it's constantly trying to lean into those moments, whether it's on camera or not, that I'm afraid to do this. What am I afraid of? I'm afraid of being judged, right? Like, I mean, I could be in my undershirt all day, but I don't want to be on the, in my undershirt in front of yeah. other people, right? And yeah. so because of that fear, I don't want that fear to own me. So I have to step into it. And now I could do it again if I needed to, right? It's not an expression of me, right? Like, I don't want to walk around all day in my undershirt. It's, it's an undershirt for a reason, but mm -hmm. I could do it if I wanted to. And I don't want that fear to control me. And I think yeah. a lot of people don't, do things because of the fear. They don't post to Instagram because of how it might be judged. Yeah, they don't YouTube. post to YouTube because of how yeah. people might look at them. They don't ask for that interview because they might get a no, right? Yeah. Um, so every time I feel that fear or potential embarrassment, then I want to I want to step in and do it. And worst case, it becomes a great story. Rule number three is follow the momentum. I think motivation is like short term. So there's got to be like a long term solution. I think the key to that is like momentum, because like once you start getting wins and like you, you start feeling like that high from winning it, like it just kind of it gets addicting. And it's obviously all starts with small wins, like just waking up when you tell yourself you're going to wake up. It gets like it gets addictive because you start to change your identity for yourself. You yeah. start to see yourself as somebody who's successful, who's having yeah. success. That's the addictive part. It's like, I'm, I'm a successful person. Like I am starting to get results. I feel great about myself that I'm getting these results. And so that's why hitting the snooze button is the opposite. You're telling yourself that you suck. Mm -hmm. Telling yourself, I don't hit my goals. So you have to be very careful about the goals you set for yourself and to make sure you follow through. And I love momentum. And I think you should, if you did something every day that made yourself feel proud, like I'm proud of myself today. Yeah. But you guys, you're proud of yourself for doing whatever. And I, and I can't judge what you feel proud of or not. But if you're proud of yourself every day for doing something, whether you get a result or not, just the fact that you tried to do something and you're proud of that, that builds your self-respect, that creates momentum, and that changes your life. Rule number four is set your intention. What questions do you tend to ask yourself every day? Or if there's just one question, what do you ask yourself? 
Um, I think the most important one is what's my intention for the day. So the, the first okay. thing that I do is I wake up and ask, what's, what's my intention for today? What is today? You know, so, so we're recording this on a Thursday. Thursday is my public facing day. Yeah. That's when I, I put my extrovert hat on and I'm doing yeah. interviews and group meetings. And we had our movement makers this morning. Yeah, it was and great. then I had a podcast. Now I'm on your show. And then I'm going to have to do like, it's just all day long. It's going to be interviews and podcasts and shows. Mm-hmm. And yesterday was my project day. And I just have the whole day open, do whatever I want. And Tuesday is my YouTube day. And tomorrow's my CEO day. And when I'm in it, I'm not thinking about what's next. Like today, all I care about is your show and what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. And then my next interview, I'm going to think about their show. I, what am I doing tomorrow? I don't know. I mean, I know it's CEO day, but I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing yeah. tomorrow until I get to tomorrow. So yeah. I use the morning as a reset to say, oh, what am I, what am I doing today? Oh, today's Thursday. Okay, Thursday. I, I wake up like I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like I wake up like, what day is today? What, what am I supposed to be working on? It's not like I wake up and say, I'm ready. It's Thursday. Let's go, fam. Come on. Right. Like I, nobody wakes up like that. And so I wake up and I'm, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And I look at the calendar and, and I look at what I'm doing for the day. So who am I, inter- who am I having on? Oh, I'm going to be on a financial developer. Oh yeah. I love that guy. He was on my YouTube live stream. Uh, I, oh, today's movement makers day. Awesome. Oh, and I'm doing this stuff coming up. Great. And I just want to, get myself ready. What's my intention for today? I want to try to bring the best for all the people that I'm trying to show up for. Mm-hmm. My intention is to try to be my best for you here today, for every other you know, interview yeah. I'm doing, for movement makers this morning. It's my intention. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I don't hit it. You know, maybe, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you walk away and say, Evan, man, that sucked. That was the worst interview I've ever seen you do. Awesome. It's like, it was still my intention to show up right? Because yeah. when you're thinking about something else, if I'm here talking to you and I'm thinking about what I'm doing this weekend, I'm not, yeah, it's not, the I'm not here for you. I'm not creating, yeah. I, I think it's disingenuous to the intention here. Yeah. So in the morning, what's my intention for the day? And I'll look at my calendar and I think your calendar should be a reflection of your goals. Okay. Right? Like if you want to accomplish your goals, yeah. there's Make habits that have yes. to happen. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just an idea. If you don't do anything, right? If you just, I have all these ideas of who I want to interview. If you're never reaching out, it's never going to happen. So in your calendar has to be actions that will help you accomplish your goals. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free, there's a link in the description below. Go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business. I'll see you there. Rule number five is believe. Why is there so much negativity in the system? Well, it's because there's a lot of pain in the system. Uh, When you've been in pain, did you always show up as your best self? Did you show up and do things that you were super proud of when you were hurting in a lot of pain, mm-hmm. right? Probably not, right? Like you all, you come out and you do a lot of negative things sometimes. And so just understanding that can, can take a lot of the sting out of people's words. This isn't a bad person. This isn't a toxic person. They're just in a lot of pain. And we expect people who are in pain to, to lash out and do bad things. Um, anyway, once you figure out what that, who is, that serves you for life. So if yours is believe, then now you know the kinds of people who you need on your team. If you're going to hire a video editor, it's great if they have all the skill sets of how to cut videos together, but they better love belief. They better they better be a person who likes belief. It doesn't necessarily have to be their who, but it's got to be pretty close. Mm-hmm. So now you know the kinds of people that you want to attract into your life. You know the message that you want to put out there to the world. It becomes the lens through which you see the world. And any time that you're not happy, it's because there's a lack of belief somewhere, lack of belief in yourself, lack of belief in the relationships around you, lack of belief in the team members that you've got, um, lack of belief in the projects that you've got going on, that leads to unhappiness. And so it's also a quick fix. We just need to have more belief in the system for us to be happy. And that's for anybody, figure out your who, it gives you that roadmap for happiness for the rest of your life. It, It doesn't get old, like that Tina will be 120 years old, still believing in other people. It's not going to be like, oh, this year I'm going to switch it to something else. Like, no, that's who you are.
Rule number six is build good habits. How do you personally set goals? And then what happens if you don't hit a goal? Because like it does happen sometimes. And like, obviously what matters is what you do about it. So, so here's the thing. So I don't, most of my goals are habits. They're not like I want to make X amount of money by the end of the year. It's the habits, right? So it's not, I want to be able to lift X amount. It's I want to, I want to be spending half an hour in the gym every day, or I want to make sure I'm waking up at this time every day. It's the habits you can check off and say, I did that. So I think that's where most people will mess up on their goals. It's, it's the daily habits. You are what you consistently do. It's not about achieving that outcome. It's about being the person who can achieve that outcome. And that's by setting daily and weekly consistent habits for yourself. If you don't hit it for some reason, then the big question is, are you proud of the reason why? So I had a guy, I'm doing this tour right now. I'm driving in the car between Sacramento and, and Salt Lake City somewhere in Nevada right now, <laughs> desert, it's wild. Um, I had a guy in my Columbus stop and he said, hey, Evan, I, I had a goal that I want to I wanna do six days a week cold showers, okay? One day off, Saturday off, six days a week cold showers. It was Friday night in my workshop. He said, my heat's been out all day. I've been at my girlfriend's house all day. Her heat was off. And so I've been freezing all day long. And so I, I didn't do my cold shower like I said I would. Should I do my cold shower? I said, well, are you proud of the reason why you didn't do it? And he said, no. Okay, then you have to go take a cold shower. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow you have to take another cold shower, even though it's your day off, just to show yourself what you're capable of. Damn. And so when you don't do something, it's are you proud of the reason why not? Right? So like I'm on this tour right now, 90 days, 23 cities, I'm, I'm two thirds of the way through as we're talking. I've committed to going to the cities. I've sold tickets in these different cities. You know, if my mom went to the hospital tomorrow for something, I would cancel my tour and go home and be with my mom. I didn't follow through on my goals. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I'm disappointing a whole bunch of people who, who bought tickets and I do my best to make it up to them, but I'm not going to make everybody happy. Like some people will be pissed at me. Yep. But am I proud of the reason why I didn't do my goal? Hell yeah. So I'm okay yeah. with it. Right? So when you set a goal, you have to follow through. And if you don't, then then are you proud of the reason why not? And if you're not, then you have to come back twice as strong the next day just to show yourself. Rule number seven is value your team. How do you uh, make your team better? Like, how do you like to go ahead and try and make, improve your team day to day? I think it's, it's caring about them as people. Mm-hmm. wanting them to win as humans more than you want them to win with you. I want the people on my team to win as people more than I want them to win with me. Now, quite often, it's a similar path. It's like, hey, you want to do this. Your best path is to stay with me and I'll help you get there. But it may mean that they have to leave and go do something else, right? Yeah. Like Zan, if you watch our, our live stream, Zan is my co-host. Yeah. Um, I want Zan to win. Mm-hmm more than I want him to win with me. And that may mean he has to jump off at some point and not be my co-host on this stream. Mm -hmm. If I ever felt like me being with Zane on the stream wasn't in his best interest, I would kick him out. I would kick him out. It's like, Dan, I love you. You can't be here anymore. You have to go do that thing. I'm not going to let you stay here. You have to go off and do that thing. It's, It's even though he's bringing so much value to me, it's actually holding him back. If I felt, I don't feel that way. I think it's great for him. But if I did, I push him away towards the thing that he should be doing. And when you, when you do that, most people only think, what can this person do for me? When you think, what does this person need and how can I help them? Often again, there's parallel paths. But at some point, some people may have to divert and go do something else. Maybe somebody's with you for life. Maybe somebody's with you for 10 years. Maybe somebody's with you for 10 months or 10 hours and, and they have to go off and do their thing. But while we're together, I'm, I just want you to win as a human. And when people feel that, you get their, not just their brain, but you get their heart and their soul. Yeah. Rule number eight is learn to monetize. I don't think people grow up with a healthy perspective on money. Some people like you alluded to think money is everything. And, and the next person coming in, that's my next purse. And that's my next, she's my next suit or she's my next car or whatever. Uh, and money is, is everything. And there's other people though, which I find a lot more in my community who think money is the root of all 
evil. Right? Mm-hmm. But it's actually the love of money is the root of all evil, but it gets shortened to money is the root of all evil. And so you're afraid to make money and you think money is bad and money is, it, it, you shouldn't make money. You have to make money. I think money needs to be, in your, especially if you want to be an entrepreneur, money has to be in your top five list of priorities. It just can't be number one. But it's not number 1,000 either. Like you have to learn how to monetize and make money because if you want to serve, if you're stuck in some job that you hate, and you're only serving for free on the weekends and evenings, you're limited to how much you can help. But if you can turn this into a full-time business and then hire people on your team, and now you've got 10, 20, 100 people working for you, all aligned to this mission that you're on to save people, right? Imagine the impact you can have because you learned how to make money. It just can't be number one. So the last section in the book talks about how to turn that, those ideas you got, that passion you got, the big heart into something that can actually serve the world, but also make you money. Rule number nine is discover your strengths. Do you believe we're born to do something or do we just find something along the way? I think everybody has what I call Michael Jordan level talent at something. Most people never find it. Uh, I believe even the, the greatest basketball player of all time isn't Michael Jordan. It's somebody you've never heard of. It's a manager at Starbucks because he never picked up a basketball. And so he could have been the greatest of all time. And instead, he's a manager at Starbucks and he's okay with his life instead of being great at something. And so I don't know, you know, I don't I don't know about the words destined or anything like that. But I I believe everybody has that kind of talent. You have genius level talent at something and you've got to go and figure out what that is. And it's it's your responsibility, not just to yourself, but to your community, to your family, to the people around you, to the world, to then share it, share that gift. And so. Part of the path to finding it is just trying things. You know, maybe not everybody should be an entrepreneur, but everybody should try it. You should try it and see, like, did I like that? Did I, was that fun? Was that enjoyable? Do I want to keep doing that? And if it's not, great, then go do something else. I think too many people don't try enough things. We get locked into a career path way too soon, and then you don't know how to get off of it. And then the further on you get, the more responsibilities you have, the more difficult it is to jump off and do your own thing. And so I think it's everybody's responsibility, first to themselves, to have a happy life, to figure out what they have Michael Jordan level talent at. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips, is start taking risks. Taking risk while you're young, because a lot of people don't like understand that. Like, I mean, people that are listening that are like, in christianized spot like we're young and like we don't have a lot to worry about like now is the time to take that risk like if you ever had the thought of being an entrepreneur i feel like now is the time to like try it out because jobs are going to be available like later down the road yeah i'm I, you know I, I think now is now is always the right answer like it, it's easier when you're when you're young but i'm i'm 38 now 38 39 in may great like if I was in a job that I hated as a 38, 39 year old, and I hated my life, now is the time. What, I'm gonna wait another 30 years of working for some company that I hate. You know, like now is always the right time. Now is people wait for the perfect time; it never comes, and then and then you end up in a retirement home, regretting your entire life. So now is always the time. YouTube is a long form platform. This podcast, however long it goes, well, it's, not a, it's not a 40 second clip, right. right? I love data. I love making data driven decisions. It might be great to feel a certain way, but I want to see that it actually has a result. 100%. Right? My so, morning conversation. Great. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube gives you the best data of any platform. So when this video comes out, you'll see in your audience retention, there's a, there's a curve yeah, yeah, called yeah. the audience retention curve, mm-hmm. where basically you see where people are leaving the video. Mm-hmm. So at the start, it's 100%. Everybody who watches at 0, 0, 0, 0, they're, they're there. But then as the video goes on, it's this curve. You'll see at some points a sharp curve where it drops a lot. People left. Whatever you did there sucked. Don't do that again. Probably a commercial. <laughs> leave my commercials. <laughs> Got to pay the bills, guys. Right? You know? But I even, eat. even timing around the commercials. Right. If you do it too soon, you might lose a, a big percentage sure. of your audience. But there'll also be these magical moments where it's flat which means nobody left. For this two minute clip, nobody left. Whatever we were talking about, nobody left. And then you'll have some really magical moments where it goes up. How is that possible? People rewinding the clip to watch that part again. Mm-hmm. That's what you cut and put to your Instagram. We could take these businesses in different directions. Like if the goal is, is speaking, 
the key thing is getting to know the people who are hosting these events. Mm -hmm. Who are the people putting it on? And build a relationship with them. The easiest way to do that is the Biz Dev Show. Mm. So you have them on your show. Mm -hmm. You already have a podcast, it's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're selecting the guests to come on your show, mm -hmm. but now it's with an intent to, I want to get speaking gigs from this person or their network. Mm -hmm. Like, are you already thinking about that or how have you picked? I mean, the reason I started the podcast was to have a big personal development brand podcast. And so my concern in that is that a lot of the people I get on now are speakers, authors, you know, coaches, that stuff, which I understand I can't market to them because yeah. they're in the same game, but not to dilute the podcast, if that makes sense. So you have two choices there. One, you start a different show mm -hmm. geared just towards this, mm -hmm. or two, you find an angle that it feels right in yeah. your heart yeah. to have them on. Yeah. So if you're looking at who's putting on events for entrepreneurs, you can go research all the events for entrepreneurs, uh, or even like, I don't know if you go into sales or if you go into mm. MLM. Or yeah, like I would, yeah. Stuff. Great. So all of those conferences or people who are selling insurance, like all of these things, they're like pseudo entrepreneurs, insurance yep. Yep. people are, yeah, yeah. you're kind of an entrepreneur, but yeah, you're yeah. not. Way less risk, yeah. Right? Yeah. Real estate, same thing. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur, but there's like a support system around yeah. it. So there's lots of events happening around those things. Yeah. You find a list of all the events, you find a list of who's organizing them, you invite them on your show to be a guest. They care about personal development. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't be putting on these events. True. Yeah. Why put on an event for entrepreneurs or real estate professionals or MLM industry or yeah. whatever? Yeah. They care about this stuff. Do you personally connect with them enough that it feels right in your heart to have them on the show? You can make a judgment call. Yeah. Whether it, it's a fit for the main show or you start a different show around it. Yeah. But that's going to be your fastest path to get speaking gigs. Right. Talk to the people who are hosting the events. Yeah. Other speakers and authors, not that they see you as competition, yeah. but they're, they're probably going to take the deals that they like the best. For sure. You know, and they yeah. may not remember you or pass, like they, they have lots of entrepreneur friends and speaker friends that you may not be the first person that they call yeah. if they want to turn it down. That's right, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's not that it's not possible, it's just a much longer road. Yeah. So if we want to be strategic and get, we want to get deals for our speaking gig, like that's the fastest way to really do it. Yeah. And it's not that difficult to execute. How you are like, connecting with your followers on a level um, that is adding value to them, but is allowing them to continue to consume your content. One, you have to love it. Mm -hmm. Like I love connecting with the community. Okay. So there's a lot of people who, who don't love it and you don't have to do it, right? So mm -hmm. I remember I was in New York and I was meeting a really big name author, you know, New York Times bestseller, et cetera. And I was in town, he said, hey, let's go grab breakfast. So we grab breakfast together and, and he said, well, what are you doing for the rest of the day? He's like, oh, I'm gonna have lunch with another fan who said he like, became a millionaire after watching my content and then we're gonna do an afternoon meet up at a Starbucks with you know, my fans in New York and we're just gonna chill at a Starbucks yeah. and ask questions. I don't care about seeing New York, I just care about meeting the people. And he said, that sounds exhausting. Like, oh, what are you gonna do? It's like, I'm gonna go back to my room and write. And he's had tons of success as a writer, right? So yeah. it's not that one way is better than the other. Mm -hmm. It's just that I, I love doing it. And so it's tapping into, like, if that's where you get your energy from, of the audience that you have and people listening to you, watching you, et cetera, then that's where the thing needs to be birthed, not mm -hmm. from, uh, this is a good strategy, so I guess I should do it, right? So inside of that, I do things like that, where I do meetups, in cities when I travel, okay. uh, even here, inviting you back. It's like you message me, it's like, hey, what are you doing on Tuesday? You wanna come by and yeah. do something you know, for content too? And every day I'll do Instagram questions. If you see my stories, I always put a question and then at the end of the night, my evening routine, no matter how tired I am, I'm still like responding to questions. I'll do like 10 questions. And you're, do, you're responding yourself. Yeah, it's me. Like when I'm helping people, I try to do it where there's scalability to it as well. Okay. So, you know, the, the people who are here today that I'm helping, they're helping, but it's also content so other people can learn from it, hopefully in, in your story, right? When I'm doing Instagram Q and A, it's mm -hmm. on my stories so people can leave a question, I'll answer it for everybody. Okay. Right? Um, I still do a lot of one-on-ones in the DMs as well, but the, there's just not enough time in the day to hit Everyone. Even the questions that come in every day, I don't have time yeah. to do everybody. 
but it's more of a heart thing where it's like it, I need that as part of my nightly mm -hmm. routine to That's stay great. connected to the work because otherwise it becomes why am I doing this stuff you know the yeah. numbers start to blur and not mean much right you know you had a million or two million or whatever it's like okay I, I don't know what that means but mm. somebody saying your video changed my life you saying you know, I watch your videos for eight years every day to learn from somebody new. That, that's why I do what I do. I need to feel connected to who I'm serving or helping. Okay. And in doing that, then it makes me want to show up more. Because if you're just making videos in your office, or you're just yeah. recording the song in the studio, and you can't connect to like who it's going to actually help, uh, at least for me, it's not as powerful. People are so scared of the opinions, or like I said, they feel need, they feel they need to be somebody, and it's so powerful to where you know they aren't open about it. And it's 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 when you're open about it that things start to open up for you. So kind of like when did you realize that, dude? Many times, and and I'm still going through it, just on bigger levels. Uh, I'm an introvert, so that doesn't come across in my videos and interviews like this and stuff, but. But I'm an introvert, so I have no need to share my story, to talk. The biggest fight I get into with my agent, who's this you know, tough New York guy, is, Evan, your problem is you don't want to be famous. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't have a need to be famous. You need to get famous for your message to get heard. So how does an introvert become famous? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Join me on this journey, and we'll see. <laughs> um, lots, man, lots. Uh, from, from big things to little things. So l let's start with a little one. Um, I'm at, I'm at Tony Robbins' event. So Tony, I've been working with Tony for the past four-ish years. Nice, um, nice. He invites me to his event to sit in his specific chairman, you know, seating and meet him backstage and all this stuff. They have these security guards who are all around the stage because you can't get, you know, somebody jumps on the stage, they have to be there. So yes. they're rotating, right? And so as they rotate around, every 20 minutes or so, they do a rotate and, and, the guy from that corner comes to the front of the stage and they, they do this little fist bump with each other and, mm -hmm. then, and then they rotate on to the next one. So they keep going in this clockwise direction every 20 minutes doing fist bumps. So I'm sitting there and it's like it's happening right in front of me because I'm in the front <laughs> row. And uh, I was like, I'm going to fist bump the next security guard. I'm going to fist bump. I want to fist bump the next security guard <laughs> because just to show some love to security guards, you know, like, hey, you're important. I recognize you. So the next rotation comes around. My heart's beating. <laughs> So, so they come and I put my fist out like this. He looks at it and keeps walking. Like I just got, I just got <laughs> owned. I just got rejected by, by the security guard at Tony Robbins event. I can't believe it. I'm, <laughs> my, my initial instinct is, oh my God, I hope nobody, like who saw that? Did anybody see me just get destroyed here by the security guard? And of course we always make the story way bigger in our head than, than it is. Like yeah, chances exactly. are almost nobody saw it. And the ones who did, did they even care? And I'm sure like two people maybe saw it and are laughing, right? But in my head, it's like everybody, the whole world saw it, right? Um, and so in that 20 minutes before the next security guard, fist bump came up, I'm sitting there, I'm reflecting, I'm not even listening to Tony at this point because I'm, I'm stuck in my world about the, the lost fist bump, like what do I do next? And, and here's the thing that got me to do the fist bump again. Humans are built to serve. Humans are built to serve. We're wired to serve. Like serving and helping others does the same thing to your brain as food and sex. Like we're, we're wired to serve. Yep. It's human nature. It's human it's nature. It's human nature. Yeah. But, and at the same time, we are afraid of, of other people's opinions, judgments, expectations. Mm -hmm. And so most people live life with their, their foot on the gas and the brake at the same time because serving involves yeah. other people. You have to help others. You have to do something for others. It's not just serving yourself. That doesn't feel good. It's serving other people. But if you're also at the same time afraid of how they're gonna react and judge you, then you never do anything. Most entrepreneurs aren't patient enough. Most entrepreneurs end up losing their business. They end up shutting down because they think it's gonna happen in a couple months or even six months or a year. And really it's gonna take them four years, five years before they hit their mark. They don't have enough patience. They don't allow enough time for momentum to build up and they quit. And they end up going back to a crappy job that they hate. And maybe never ever take a shot at getting entrepreneurship because they feel it's not for them. Where really, they missed out. You missed out on your destiny. You missed out on creating something amazing because you just didn't have enough patience. Now, 
I believe in patience in the macro. I believe in patience and knowing it's going to take a long time. I also think impatience can serve you greatly. But that's in the micro, that's in the daily, the impatience of did I do my best today? Did I do my best today? Can I do better? Can I drive more? Can I drive harder? And knowing that even if I give my best every single day, it's still going to take time. It's still going to take a number of years for something to happen. I want it to happen as soon as possible. I'm going to drive and be impatient as crazy to get it going. But I know it's going to take time too. It's embracing both. That's when you start to win. I look at my, my YouTube, my Instagram, my social media strategy. YouTube, 7,000 subscribers four years ago. 1.2 million subscribers now. Four years by making videos every day. Every day. And I'm impatient as anything because I want it to be amazing. I want to make every video better than the last and looking for all the hacks and SEO and thumbnail strategies and title strategies and all of the stuff that we're supposed to do, right? I'm on top of it. And I know that it's going to take me four years to get there. I know it's going to take me a while to get to my next 2 million, 5 million, 10 million. I look at Instagram. Follow me on my Instagram journey. I'm starting from nothing. You can see how to build it up from zero. I had 8,000 followers. Many of you already have more followers than I do on Instagram. But I'm going to win. I'm going to pass people. I'm going to get mine because I'm going to make daily consistent content three to four times a day for four years. I'm going to be impatient as anything and that the post today has to be amazing, has to be something that I want to show my grandkids, right? That's the intent every time I create anything. I want my grandkids to watch this video. I want my grandkids to watch the next Instagram thing that I put up. It's the best that I can come up with in the moment. And I know it's going to take me four years, maybe three years, maybe two years, but it's not going to take me two months. I realize it's going to take working hard and working smart together, always. For someone who wants to create this master morning routine, yeah. you know, it's one thing to just listen or to see what other people are doing, but how can they actually create one for themselves? So I, I split it into two. The first part is what has made you bold, powerful, confident, alive, right? It, it's happened to you, you felt it, it's just not consistent, that's the yeah. problem. For most of us, it's not consistent. You have these moments of boldness, like, I can do anything, and then you wake up tomorrow, like, I can't do that <laughs> thing anymore, and we just live in the world of, I can't do it, but you, you feel like you're capable of more, but you're afraid to take action. So in those moments where you have felt boldness, what did you do just before? Did you, did you have a conversation? Did you meditate, pray, like whatever the thing was? Yeah. Then that's not even pulling from somebody else, that's you. You've already felt boldness, what happened? How did you do it? Now try to plan that in your morning routine. And that can be different for other people. For me, it's helping people. And so the easiest way to do it is by going live on Instagram. Um, then it's pulling from different people to see what are they doing and how can you apply it. I love small tests. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about journaling before, yeah. before we went live. Um, so a lot, lots of people do journaling. Tim Ferriss does journaling. Like lots of successful entrepreneurs do journaling. So okay, I'm going to, great, idea to action. I'm yeah. huge on idea. You get an idea, go do something about yes. it. Yes. We have a big mission to change the world, right? I'm yes. And it's like, okay, our immediate goal, I need, and maybe we hit that in a couple months. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to take the December to, that's right. what you're going to leave, but we can, yep. if you have 10 clients who are still, we're happy too, right? Very much. So, but the immediate <laughs> goal is not, it's not some crazy thing that you're coming in to say, I need to have right. a thousand clients paying me a Right? Yeah. So it's five clients. Five clients. Between now and December. December. Right? Yeah. Perfect. At a minimum. So then it's who are the best people who can afford you yeah. to pay $2,000 a month? If you connect better with women, then we get to find it's women. It's not that you only have to do one, but it's, it's yeah. helpful to yeah. narrow in on like the right influences to take you to the path. Right. So is it women in careers? So I've honestly mostly been, I haven't coached any woman. I've oh, okay. been coaching men. Okay. Um, and it's been, the people who I have been coaching are people that are in the, um, like in the fitness space. So it's just more about figuring who are the people who have budget, who can hire you, or mm -hmm. you get paid to come in to an organization mm -hmm. and help them with their team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, like, as I think more about this, it's like, how can I create the maximum impact? Right? Not yet. <laughs> okay. No, no, this is where we get Feel stuck. Back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is the trap. Maximum impact yeah, yeah. doesn't make you money in the next three years. Well, that's true. And we need, we have a drop dead date December 31st. Yes, we right? do. So, yes, you're yes, right. for sure. No, you're right. And, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but that's not the question right now, maximum impact. We just need impact. Right. Maximum impact on like individuals, but not world. We oh, yes. High yeah. impact and for we sure. need to be paid to do it so we yeah. can continue to build and scale. Okay. 
I think people who are going to be entrepreneurs is a really hard market because they just don't have yeah. budget. Right. And especially if they quit their job and then they go to start their business, then they have no more money to pay you. Yeah. So the coaching will probably end. Absolutely. So it's finding people who are, it, it could be if you're making a quarter million plus a year and you want to start a business. Yeah. You know, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. And I would get the 25K up front. Because <laughs> <laughs> once they start the business, it's going to be really hard to... Yeah, right? and I collect after every session. <laughs> okay, yeah, up front. Yeah, like all of that, it could be potentially negotiable. Right. Could I do quarterly installments? Could I do just six months? You don't have to say no to it, but you can say like, here's, yeah. here's, here's what we did. Doing the work is torture for most people. If you See, look at my channel, we're doing three videos a day. For a lot of people, jumping into my work schedule would be torture for them. It would be torture. It's like, it's just too much work. <laughs> right. And that's great. And it's like, I love it though. Like I chose, I chose this life. I love the work I'm doing. I love being here talking to Dick. You know, I, this is, this is good. This is happy for me. Other people are like, oh, I got to talk to Dick. I got to be on a, a live stream. I'm panicking. I'm freaking out. You put me in that landscaping job. I had a landscaping job. I would die, man. Like I hated that job. <laughs> but for other people, it's like, you know what? I love being outside. I love, I love being fit. I love my friends here. Like it's just to be successful in anything, you have to enjoy the work that you're doing. And not everything is great. You know, not every day is roses. You're going to have a lot of crap that you deal with. And the thing that gets you through all the crap is just the love for the process. And so I think it's still important to have goals. It's nice, but more important than the goal is the journey to get there. And you're just getting started in all of this, right? Yes. The opportunity here is there's the big long-term opportunity of you could help, whether it's everybody, whether it's women, whether it's women of color or whatever, yeah. that's, there's a lot of people in, yes. in, even just North America who need that. Yeah. The immediate opportunity is figuring out, okay, how do we, how do we replace our salary? Correct. Because the, the women on the train may not be able to afford you as a coach, right? Right. So this is where a lot of people get stuck. Right. At the beginning, they say, oh, I love these people and they're so good. And like, yeah. if you want to help. And then you get, you get pulled into either helping them for free or doing a like super yeah. discounted rate. Yes. And you feel so fulfilling, but it's like you are not making money, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, just in order of sequencing. So it's not that you'll, you're not able to help those women in a deep way. It's just not now. Right. Because now is we need to prioritize within our mission, making money yeah. so that we can afford to quit our job and then make more money so we can afford to hire a team to help mm -hmm. us build our brand. So mm -hmm. it, like I'm purpose first. Yes. And you have to learn how to monetize, right? Right. Like, number one is mission, purpose, and then somewhere in two to five has to be making money right. if you're an entrepreneur or you don't make money. Tell us what is one thing you do every morning to set your day up for success? Um, I've got a bunch. I'm trying to think like what would be a really cool or different one. Um, thinking about service, right? Like it's so easy to get complacent as an achiever. So thinking about like what I do today has to matter. I want to create something meaningful that's going to help impact other people's lives today and putting that pressure like tomorrow is a different day. Today, something important has to happen. Giving has to be a part of the morning routine. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to think about well, that. Yeah. Whether that's, whether that's actually giving in terms of like, you're going to take a call with somebody and mentor them. Uh, or you're going to buy the coffee for the person behind you in line, or you're just going to meditate and pray for somebody. Like I'm thinking of somebody in my head and I'm, I want them to have love today. And you're like focusing your energy on supporting somebody else. Giving will make you feel so much more alive and has to be a part of your daily routine. Whatever you want to sell, show me the process of you doing it. So if you don't have an email list yet, you can even look at who's following you on Instagram and message people and oh. say, hey, I, I'm going to do a free coaching session for people. Who wants 25 minutes of my time for free to talk about coaching? Whatever issue you have, you're an entrepreneur, whatever confidence issue you're facing right now, I will coach you for free, but, but it's going to be yeah. online. Okay. Those are two different shows though. The biz dev show is we're trying to build a relationship with a potential client.
client and get them on the show to tell their story, but then inject a little bit of what you do. 25% of the show is about you and confidence coach and helping them. The second show is just a straight up coaching show where they know they're coming on to be coached, uh, okay. but they may not be in, they may not be an ideal client for you. Mm. It's just anybody who needs coaching. Okay. 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 Cause I need, I, I want to see that you're a good coach because you can, talk and you can give me your frameworks xyz and you can you can have all of your material you can but that makes you a good speaker mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. how do i know if you're a good coach right correct. like ted williams was a great correct. baseball correct. player but correct. he wasn't a great coach so you could be a great speaker but it doesn't mean you're a good coach so how do i know okay. if you're a good coach i need to see you coach so you that's a that's a separate series on the channel so now we're splitting it up between the biz dev show where we're trying to get clients and a coaching show where we're, we don't care if their ideal clients are not coming on. We're just trying oh. to show coaching and, and help them, of course, and help them. And then if you have your website or you build out your funnel, that then becomes content. So when somebody lands on your, hey, hire Frankie to be your coach, I can see examples of what okay. you do and how you coach people. How are you able to overcome those barriers that were kind of those limiting beliefs that are maybe holding you back from becoming the thought leader, inspirational person that you wanted to be, that you are now? The starting point for me really was I always focused on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. Most of the time we're focused on who we're not yet. Well, why don't I have, I've got what, three and a half million subscribers now? Why isn't it five or like 50 or a hundred or a billion? You know, it's like, it's always who are we not? And so at the beginning, we really struggled to get going because 25 people watched your video. And you feel like a total failure, especially if you've had success in a different field. If you had all the success in real estate investing, and then you make a YouTube video and 25 people watch it, it's like, that's rough. It feels like you've, you've, you've already tasted success. It's really hard to start at the beginning of something new. We feel like I've got information. I've got good knowledge. I should, I should be doing better than this. I just always focus though on who I was serving and who I wasn't. When I started on YouTube, I'd already sold my company. I already had my first exit. I was already in the venture capital game as well. So we already had some success. I was just doing it to try to give back and serve and help. And so if 25 people saw the video, I'm like, hey, that's 25 people who saw the video. That's 25 people. For one person, I might be a life-changing video. And I just always focused on who I was serving instead of who I wasn't. And, and it grew to the point where they started recommending and referring. And I understood the algorithm a little bit better. And YouTube caught up to being an educational platform. Um, but if you can focus on that, that, Hey, I did 25 today and I did 28 tomorrow and I did 35 the next day. It's like this, the growth curve starts to take off for you. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Tom Bilyeu, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Once you decide to believe that you can learn anything, your life will change forever. Because most people believe their talent and intelligence are fixed traits, and that life's just about making the best of the hand that you were dealt. The amount that you can learn